as we were discussing here, small business is increasingly needing to have cyber insurance, but the problem is that it's getting prohibitively expensive. Um, and it's also, you know, it's a big question mark around what type of insurance do I actually need and what is it actually protecting um, and, and uh, how is it protecting my business? So uh, we have learned that, you know, no business is immune to cyber risk. Next slide. Um, and, you know, so small business has become a primary target of those bad actors that are out there. Um, so, you know, getting to those bigger companies that we hear about those major breaches that are occurring, most of those actually happen through a, a vendor of theirs that is the small businesses like, uh, like us and you guys and, and all those sorts of things. So more than ever, it's more important for us to have uh, the insurance that we need, but also the, the tools in place so that we can actually make sure that we are practicing good cyber hygiene. Um, so as you can see here on this slide, we've got you know 43 percent of attacks are targeted towards small businesses, um, which is just growing by the day. Um, and then 47 percent of small businesses um, have no understanding of how to protect themselves against cyber attacks, which is very scary. Um, and 955 thousand dollars is the average amount spent by small businesses to restore normal operations after an attack. So what you know Risk Assure hopes to do is actually help companies um, obviously reduce that dollar amount if a breach were to occur. Um, next slide. So with that being said, um, it's not a matter of if your company is going to have a breach or a cyber incident, it's a matter of when. And in fact, most companies um, are, are already breached and don't even know it yet. Um, and it can usually take even up to a year before you actually realize you've been breached. Um, so there's some very scary things going on out there um, and that is in the past, have been primary to larger businesses because they felt like they could get more out of them, but now they realize they can go through the small businesses to get to those larger ones. So next slide. So what are the things that we need to be thinking about um, uh, to get an accurate quote? And so, you know, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of things that you can do to reduce premiums right now because even insurance carriers are a little scared about the risk and, and things like that. So what we um, propose is that we can become better optimized organizations to know exactly what kind of uh, risk we carry so that when we go to these carriers and fill out their, um, their underwriting forms and those sorts of things, the applications, we can go in there with confidence about the information that we actually know. So, um, so visibility to total volume of dollar amount of your sensitive information is, is super key because unfortunately today, um, most people, it's a gut hunch. Um, and the insurance companies are taking you at your gut hunch and then obviously saying, all right, so you're basically uh, attesting to the fact that this is how much risk you have. Um, and if it happens to be worse than that, then they're not on the hook. So we want to make sure that companies are actually optimized uh, and understand the total value that they have. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's also a world in which we can now provide information and insight into how many files do you have? How much of that of those files are actually risky so you know what you're actually trying to protect uh, basically the contents within your network um, we do want to reduce the risk um, so once you can see your files you know take action to eliminate um, not just uh, information you don't need but also duplicates um, so uh, we have done some tests with some companies that have actually shown they for every one document they think they have there's actually 12 um, because you'd be surprised how often that document gets passed back and forth between different devices within your network um, and you don't know that those uh, uh, exist. So again, we, we help shine a flashlight in those dark rooms to help you understand where that information is at um, so that you can, again, better optimize your file footprint and, and have less risk in your network. Um, the other piece of this is, you know, let's plan ahead. Um, again, once you understand your risk and where it lives, you can create a cybersecurity plan or even policies around what you need to do here. Um, so again, once you understand your risk, where those files live, which devices that they're on, um, you can now put policies in place to, to measure your human behavior. Um, and then, which obviously leads to the employee awareness because um, a majority of incidents occur because of human error, unfortunately. And when we say majority, it's usually somewhere in the 90 to 95%. It, it, it doesn't matter how good your security is and all those sorts of things. If your people aren't living up to it and being held accountable to it, that's unfortunately where most of these uh, um, breaches then occur. Um, next slide. So this is a slide that basically just talks about some of these major players and how much uh, <laughs> the, these mistakes cost them. So $1.3 billion in these breaches that occurred that, you know, through um, 
breach fines, penalties, and settlements so far. Um, and a lot of these bad act or sorry, these companies were because of bad actors who went through smaller businesses that got into them. Um, in fact, I can't remember exactly which company it was, but they actually got through their air conditioning company through their thermostat. Um, and so it's just things like that where it's just it's it's nuts the types of uh, places a bad actor can get through. Next slide. So with that, no industry is safe. Um, you know, there's there. There are industries that have often said, well, I'm not in tech or I'm not this, so therefore I'm not gonna be that. No, if you use uh, a Nest system, if you use any sort of uh, Wi-Fi networks, if you use anything like that, you can be breached and someone can get through you. And if you have any sort of uh, usernames and, and portals that you use with companies, they can get through those. Um, so everybody is basically a, a, a channel into something bigger for these bad actors. So. Um, so while no industry is safe, some are more unsafe than others, or at least riskier than others. Next slide. So if you're in the insurance, healthcare, and financial services industries, you're particularly exposed um, just because of the amount of uh, PHI and PII, personally identified information and personal health information. Um, those are obviously big things that, that uh, these bad actors are going for. Um, so if you're in the uh, health insurance industries, financial industries, insurance industries, um, and especially during these bu busy mo um, time frames, like enrollment seasons and things where you have way more information, then those are gonna be probably the times in which you might see uh, these bad actors playing out. The other piece of the information that's super important here is in the last three years, the average findable cost per record has increased from $129 to $180 per record instance. And so what that means is this is just basically the fines around if a social security number is found out in the wild that was supposed to be under your purview, um, has already increased from $129 of final value to 180. And by the way, every instance of that same social security number that's out in the wild, if, the, if it's found, you could be fined for every instance of it, not just for every social security number. So next slide. So more important now than ever, um, is uh, we talked about the people risk. Um, and now that COVID-19 has occurred and we have become more of a hybrid environment where people are working remotely and those sorts of things, that's just made uh, it even harder for us to, to protect our, our businesses and um, our networks and things like that. Because now, not only are we trying to protect our offices, we now have to try to see what we need to do to protect um, our employees who are working from home or do they have the right systems and settings set up so that it keeps things protected, um, what sort of, uh, you know, laptops are they leaving open and people are able to just take or, you know, people breaking into their homes or something simple as just leaving their laptop at a, a cafe or something along those lines and then a bad actor is able to get into that information as well. Um, so clearly this is just multiplied the problem. Uh, next slide. Um, so uh, I, I believe that everyone may or may not be familiar with what, what a phishing attack is, but that's basically then a bad actor coming in, maybe has sent an email saying, hey, I'm the CEO, I need this kind of information from you, can you please send that over to me as an example. 76% of organizations globally are targeted by phishing attacks in the last 12 months. So this isn't, again, a small problem, this is an everybody problem. Um, and then companies globally that admit that they've had a data breach has caused material disruption to their business or processes. Again, 75% reported that that had a very real impact on their business. Next slide. This is the global average cost of a single breach. And this sounds and looks like a very scary number, um, but the truth of the matter is it is what it is. And so again, this is part of um, you know, th this is a uh, bigger business as well as small to medium businesses kind of built into this average here. So next slide. So statistically, um, all companies, regardless of size, have a 33% chance of being breached in the next 24 months. And in some cases, you won't even know if you've been breached. All right. So again, very real problem. And on average, um, this is why it's important to reduce our file footprint. 22.5 million records a day are lost to data breaches. So again, use, utilizing the right tools um, to find those duplicates, get rid of those duplicates, um, zero dollar remediation tactics to, you know, to really optimize your file footprint is super important because that's really what the bad actors are after. So if we can have less of those things for them out there, then the better. Um, the United States remains the most popular target, as I'm sure we're, we're not surprised by, uh, with 57% of breaches globally and 97% of the data in the last 24 months. Next slide. 
So fundamental problem with today's cybersecurity insurance offerings, uh, because insurance companies uh, nor businesses actually have the accurate data or the data at all um, to understand the risks they truly have um, so that they can make sure they buy the right sort of products and, and insurance to actually cover themselves. So um, we uh, have the solution in, in, uh, in Risk Assure, uh, the tools that we provide here. Next slide. And uh, again, once more. Um, in that we can actually help you understand your risk value uh, information here. So uh, again, our tool helps companies easily determine how much cyber information value that you have. So that's anything that is fineable um, per the government's uh, fines. Um, we also use uh, IBM research and a Verizon report that comes out yearly to determine what these fineable values actually are. Um, and so we, again, help pinpoint the exact information risk locations of these things. So again, we can help companies get optimized and eliminate the, the files that they don't need. And elimination could also mean just not having it on your, your, your desktops and things, but you can actually put it behind your firewalls and get them encrypted if you want to. Um, so, and then we enable the carriers um, to offer attractive cyber insurance products because we actually help them understand the true risk that's actually there um, and then actually optimize uh, uh, the customers who want to buy those products. Next slide. So, um, like I said, the very important thing here is that we want you to be very aware of your cyber information value. So every file, every device, and every network. So again, this helps us with the, um, the people side of it, um, because if you know every device, you know who are using those devices, um, you can actually then just start um, setting, you know, different policies within your organization, setting thresholds for risk that you're okay with per device to, again, to help protect yourselves against if a breach were to occur, you've minimized the amount of information that could be taken. Next slide. So again, um, eliminating the guesswork. Um, so we, we could go out there and uh, tell everybody, hey, you need to delete this file or this folder or whatever, but then tomorrow those folders or other new folders and files could have now just uh, turned up and we have no idea what's there. So it really is a lot about guesswork when it comes to um, uh, understanding your risks, except for if you're using um, tools like this one. So 49% of incidents were caused by negligent employees, again, 25%, or by system glitches, 24%, while 51% of incidents were malicious attacks. So again, half of what this is, is happening here is through um, our people. So we want a tool that can help us um, hold people accountable to our policies and procedures, again, because this is so important. Uh, next. So as you can see here, this is just a, a real quick uh, screenshot of uh, um, what a view in our tool might look like, where we have an estimated uh, cyber information value of 21 million. And, and don't be frightened. This isn't everybody. This is some test data that we had out here as well. Um, but the 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 to the takeaway from this is that there are um, risks that we just don't even know are there. Um, we've had some examples of people saying, no, we are on the cloud, so there's no way there's any risk on that device. And then when we've actually done our scan with our tool, it actually came back with millions of dollars on that device because the person who uses that device should have been going to the cloud, but instead put a file on their uh, desktop that says social security numbers. So just put that right out there for any bad actor to come out doing a, a query for social security numbers would have that file right away and $2 million for the finable value um, just on that. So th this is really hard for anybody to actually understand what is the risk that's out there at any given moment. And our tool it helps you actually understand that and, and have, if you want, a real-time cadence of that kind of information. Uh, but then it tells you your total estimated value over how many devices and things like that. So. Um, so yes, yeah, so the risk aware customers uh, use our data to make business decisions with more accuracy and effectiveness than ever before for a lot of the reasons that I've, I've stated already, but it helps calibrate um, and right size your cyber insurance coverage so you know, um, while it may not at this point, um, we're hoping in the future that it will um, impact uh, premium amounts, but what we can at least do is optimize the amount of risk that you do have, so that you don't have to go in there with a million dollars if we can optimize you by, you know, 40% now you can go and say you need a $600,000 policy instead. So there's very material ways in which we can actually reduce the coverage that you need and the premiums that you need to pay for that. And uh, an insurance carrier will be more excited about that type of a client as well, understanding that you know they have a tool like this in place that's calibrating and optimizing the risk. Um, this will also help you set a benchmark. So understanding your before and after cyber information value. So that way you can manage it 
Um, so if you can set your benchmark and you've got a million dollars worth of cipher information value, and then you optimize it by 40% using some of our zero dollar remediation tactics, um, now you're 600,000. And then if the next scan comes out and it says you're at 700,000, then you know if it's, it's increased. So there's some accountability that can be put in place to say, hey, what's going on right now? Is this a busy time of year or is this something that we could, um, you know, are people just not paying attention or, or what's the deal here? But this tool gives you that insight into those types of things so you can have uh, a better uh, practice of cyber hygiene. Um, it helps reduce and maintain your cyber value and file footprint. Um, like I said, implementing no cost cyber hygiene practices, um, and then obviously reducing your financial risk over time. Um, there's support and justify a cybersecurity budget around this because now you know exactly what you need to protect and where, um, and then continuously monitor and alert unusual changes in cyber information value. And so what that means is um, we can say um, with certainty how, you know, if there is an event that occurred where a million dollars worth of information was taken from your system, and we can tell you exactly where it was taken from, and in some cases actually tell you where it went. Um, and then it may or may not have been uh, uh, an actual incident, but at least it allows you to say, hey, a million dollars was just taken from this device. I'm going to go call that employee who uses that device and say, did you just do something? So then you can know right away if, uh, you know, if it was a bad actor or if it was somebody in your organization who was just doing their day-to-day -day, uh, operation. Next. So some early revelations and findings that we've had in some of our pilots. Um, you know, we had cyber risk value estimated around 3 million. Um, actual found on only 40% of their devices was over that 3 million that they thought they had at 4 million. So we're looking at almost $10 million worth of risk actually there when they thought they had 3 million. Um, so once there was an understanding of the risk and, and where it was located, they were able to, like I said, use some of these zero dollar remediation tactics and reduce their risk by 42% on those 40 devices that had this uh, tool working on there um, by cutting it by almost half, um, you know, $1.7 million of that they wouldn't need to worry about getting insurance coverage for. So now they can get a $2 million policy rather than, you know, $4 million policy. Next. So thank you so much for um, listening here. We do have some next steps. If you want to learn more about uh, Risk Aware, we do have uh, uh, riskassure.com as a website that you can go to, but you can download the uh, 2023 Guide to Cyber Insurance uh, ebook. And then we have a newsletter that you can sign up for. And then we do have a free version where if you want to try Risk Aware out for free. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Keith. Um... So we know that cyber insurance continues to be one of the biggest unknowns within your business. And our team at SBAM is committed to providing you with access to the best and most innovative products. So that is why we've decided to partner with Risk Assure to give our members a discount on their Risk Aware paid subscription options. So the approved partnership officially launches in April um, keep an eye out um, for more information. We'll be sending information through um, our e-newsletter alerts as well as on our website. Um, so now we will open it up to questions. I will allow attendees to talk and please, if you have any questions at all, please take the time now to ask Keith. 